Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about audio return channel and enhanced audio return channel, including HDMI control. Now, something you need to know is that eh, probably five plus years ago, uh, for the longest time, everyone had to use their TV volume in correspondence with their AV receiver. So what I'm saying is, back in the day, we used to have to mute our TV volume or somehow turn the volume completely down not to hear both the TV speakers playing audio as well as our surround sound receiver. Now that has all changed. Uh, due to Audio Return Channel, or ARC, it allows us exactly what you see on the screen here. Uh, basically, in layman's terms, it allows us to be able to plug one HDMI cable into our TV and connect that to a sound bar or surround sound receiver, say, and not have to either mute the TV volume or have the TV speakers playing as well as external speakers, like from an amplifier, or speakers that you see here. So, how does the audio return channel work? How can you use it? And what else does it do? Uh, well, I'll talk about that, and I'll, talk, I'll you know, also talk about the enhanced audio return channel feature that HDMI 2.1 specifications are going to be bringing to the scene soon. Let's first just take a look at the version that we're currently at right now, which the newest one that we're running is HDMI 2.0B. Now, HDMI 2.1 is technically on the market now via a brand, Belkin. They've come out with an HDMI 2.1 cable, but Enhanced Audio Return Channel, like you see right here, Enhanced Audio Return Channel, or EARC, is not out yet. All right, so let's get some basic things out of the way. Um, how do you use this? How do you connect it? And what are you supposed to do with it? Well, the Audio Return Channel makes you basically able to connect your surround sound receiver to your TV and not have to fuss with this TV volume and muting it and then selecting other speakers to be able to play. Let's just talk about this. It's a simple HDMI cable connected to your TV or your surround sound receiver or sound bar. Um, as opposed to back in the day, you used to have to take an optical cable and connect that to the back of your TV and simultaneously have either an HDMI connection for your video uh, component, uh, S-Video, I don't know, any other video cable for your video and then a separate cable for your audio. So no longer do we have to use that. So besides the fact that you want to use one input on your TV to act as your output as well, the audio return channel will kind of crosstalk to your receiver. And the most basic, um, you know, thing you get out of it is not having to use the TV volume remote. But also, there's something called HDMI control. Now, HDMI control is a little bit different. HDMI control allows you to say, hit the power button on my TV remote control and either turn on or off the receiver at the same time. So when I say I want to watch some content and I want to use my surround sound receiver, instead of having to take the remote to my surround sound receiver and turn the power on, I can just turn my TV on or I can do vice versa. I can turn the HDMI control on and I can turn my receiver on. I can also set the settings in the receiver to turn on the TV at the same time and utilize that. So far, we've got two advantages that HDMI control and audio return channel have given us, we talked about. We talked about the volume issue, so no longer do we have to send an optical cable out of our TV or our device into a surround sound receiver. We can just use one HDMI control cable to basically uh, get video and audio to pass through devices. So one HDMI control cable, as well as the advantage of turning on and off either the surround sound receiver, a sound bar, or another audio device, in addition to our TV or display. So first I want to point out the biggest disadvantage with the audio return channel so far. The first and largest disadvantage that I at least find with the audio return channel is it won't pass object-based audio through it, or Dolby Atmos DTSX. So let's say you're using Netflix on your TV streaming, right? And you're using an audio return channel through an HDMI cable going into your receiver. Yes, it'll pass through audio from your TV into your receiver, and you can use the TV remote control for volume on the receiver, but the big disadvantage, guys, is it won't pass the Dolby Atmos or the DTSX through to your audio device. So that is what HDMI 2.1 is going to be bringing to the scene, guys. It's going to be bringing us an enhanced audio return channel for the object-based audio like Dolby Atmos and DTSX. So that brings us to Sound and Vision's website, guys. We're going to take a look at one of their links that talks about pros and cons, or at least problems with audio return channels 
with the current specification of HDMI so far. So um, let's take a look at, first of all, enhanced audio return channel and the question of will I need a new HDMI 2.1 cable to take advantage of it. First of all, let's talk about for HDMI 2.1, of course you're going to need a new cable to really utilize all of the HDMI 2.1 specifications, but I've got some good news for people that are looking for the enhanced audio return channel that don't want to buy a brand new HDMI cable. So if we take a look here at this Sound & Vision article, we're going to see that it states, however, according to an HDMI forum, some 2.1 features such as enhanced audio return channel can be made available on products with HDMI 2.0A connections via a firmware update. Depending on the manufacturer implementation, new HDMI cables are not required for the enhanced audio return channel. So while the HDMI 2.1 guys is going to give us the 8K 60 frames per second, 4K 120 frames per second video, it's also going to give us that enhanced audio return channel, but you don't need to buy a new cable for it. So this brings us to a different Sound & Vision article, guys, about audio return channel, but we're going to talk about what if you don't have a television that offers an ARC or audio return channel input? What can you do? Well, if we notice, Sound & Vision tells us for those that don't have a TV with ARC, you would need to connect an optical digital audio cable from the TV's output to a corresponding input on the AVR. And I'm going to kind of prove to you that that's wrong. What I've got going on here in my bedroom is an older, older TV, guys, from 2007 era with no audio return channel. But what's going on? Well, we're actually acting as if it has an audio return channel. So, what I'm actually doing is making this receiver utilizing an audio return channel type feature without actually using a TV with an audio return channel. How am I doing this? Let me explain. One HDMI cable going into the TV. That same HDMI cable leaving the back of the surround sound receiver. And several different HDMI cables going into the receiver for input. But I'm going to show you that I technically am not using the audio return channel on this television since it doesn't have it, but we're acting as we do have it. Now, normally in this case, I would have to mute the volume on my TV to have no audio coming out of the TV speakers and only audio coming out of the receiver. Well, utilizing HDMI control, I don't have to. So... That is where HDMI control comes into the picture, guys, and actually acts like an audio return channel. So I'm just going to take my receiver remote here. I'm going to hit setup. I'm going to go to video, and I'm going to go to HDMI setup, and we're going to look at the fact that HDMI control is turned on. What that allows me to do is actually pass the audio through to the receiver back into the TV, and from the TV out, acting as if it were an audio return channel, into the receiver. Now, along with the fact that I can just hit power on the receiver remote and it'll turn off the TV or turn on the receiver and it'll turn on the TV and the receiver at the same time, I don't have to mute the audio or turn it down on the TV to get audio specifically coming out of the speakers and not the television. So, if you do not have a TV with audio return channel, you can still utilize those benefits. You just need one thing. You need a receiver that has HDMI control capability. That way, it'll allow you to make believe your TV has an audio return channel, essentially. So I can just essentially turn off the receiver, and in a second, the TV will just be emitting audio from the TV speakers. Simple. So let's sum things up and figure out what we've learned from this video. So, Audio Return Channel makes things simple by only utilizing one HDMI cable. Makes it simple in the fact that we can just connect our TV to our sound bar or our surround sound receiver and not have to mute the power. Also, Audio Return Channel allows us to be able to just say, turn on our television and it'll turn on our receiver as well, or vice versa. Turn it off and it'll turn off our sound bar, our amplifier. But also the fact that if you don't have a TV that has an Audio Return Channel, you can still utilize the benefits of it with a device that has audio... I'm sorry, not audio return channel, but HDMI control. The HDMI control is the key to kind of not have to 
fuss around with the volume. Now, let's also sum up the fact that we learned that HDMI 2.1, and when those specifications, at least, come onto the scene, they'll have advanced or enhanced enhanced audio return channel. And what that's going to do for us is allow us the Dolby Atmos, DTSX, or the object-based surround sound to be passed through the audio return channel, which will allow us just to be able to watch Netflix, say, on our TV application or whatever device we're using as a, as a display and get the best surround sound from that. So, hope we've learned something from watching this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll be having several videos coming in the future. Lots of stuff will be happening. Thank you for watching. Take care.